guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to finally sit down and film. It's been so long. Well, actually it's only been a week <laughs> or so since I last picked up the camera. Well, actually that's not true. I actually have two videos on deck for you girls and I just felt weird just posting without like sitting down and talking about the year and you know, there's a video on my channel where I talked about um, what I learned, I think it was 2014 and what I'm taking into 2015 or 2015 to 2016. And I was like, I wanna do that more. I wanna be able to look back on my life. My YouTube channel is kind of like my diary. And I just kind of wanted to close off the year, kind of reflect on it, talk about what's happened, what I learned and what I plan on doing in the future for 2021. I have my poopy here, she wants to get down. So let's put her down. Um, before going back to regularly scheduled content. So that's what we're doing today. We're just gonna have a sit down, chat, and talk about 2020, what happened, what happened in my life, and yeah, just chat. I have a little script on right here. I kind of like went through the months and pinpointed a couple things that I wanted to highlight that were more important for me or like what happened um, that was kind of impactful. So I'm just gonna start with January. So January uh, started out like a normal year, right? I traveled, I went to the LA Fit, I was in California looking for manufacturers that were way too expensive. But that was also when Kobe Bryant, his daughter passed and everyone else um, that was in that airplane. And that was kind of like, Oof. I remember being in LA when that happened and it was just very surreal like it it was almost like 2020 we don't want this right and it kind of was the um, And I hate to say it, but it was like the beginning of like a really bad year So that was January. I was teaching yoga classes LA fit. I traveled I had planned to travel all of the next year and obviously we know what happened. We didn't February I actually had a Lavabi launch, um, my essentials collection. Uh, we launched uh, the essentials collection with our joggers, our tanks, our crops, um, and I learned a lot from that. Uh, I've mentioned it in the videos that, you know, I kind of sped up the launch. I didn't take enough time to take marketing pictures and spread the word. And although it was probably the best up, up until that launch, um, it didn't do as well as I thought it would be. Um, but you live and you learn, right? Then also we celebrated Lavabi's first birthday. If you guys have been here from like the very beginning, you know that Lavabi started out as lift and be lifted, but I celebrated Lavabi's first birthday as a cut and sew um, business. I design all these pieces, I get them, I, I get them sewn like, it's not like I don't throw a label on pieces of clothing and call it mine. So it was a very big thing for me, very exciting. Um, <laughs> wouldn't be a video without my dog barking. I also started boxing again, and that was actually really fun. I love boxing, and it was just kind of a reminder to stop and and do things that make me happy, right? And then um, I did a little bit of modeling, and it was, it was fun. Um, then March, um, Taz and I started getting more active in our church. We started serving, we started making friends in the church, and that is also when we started premarital counseling because we wanted to just kind of make sure that our foundation for our marriage was solid and we wanted to know the in and outs of each other, how we can be better people for each other. And people ask like, were you guys fighting? And no, we weren't fighting at all. It was just, like I said, we wanted to just enter this new season of our life with knowing as much as we possibly could about each other and how to navigate each other. Yeah, we've been together for six years at that point, almost seven. And so we already knew a lot about each other. So it was more of a like ticking off the boxes and making sure that everything that we had previously spoke about um, kind of still aligned. And honestly, that was like the best decision we've ever made. I already want to go back even though like we're, we're fine. Like we, we're fine. <laughs> We also decided to not have sex till we were married in March and we made a video about it, why we thought um, or why we made that decision and that is also when lockdown started and this is when a lot started happening in our personal lives, around the world and honestly I feel like everything was magnified after March because there were no distractions from us, right? We were always 
all of us were at home watching the news and we saw all these things happening and you know, it kind of felt like everything was happening all at once. And while I totally agree that yes, everything was happening all at once, I also think that it was magnified because we were all home and we were forced to stop, right? And so, um, yeah, March happened. Um, I was also very lost at that time. I had applied for a job. I also made a video about this and I just felt very lost. I felt like I didn't know what my role in this world was. I didn't know what, I had to offer, I don't. I didn't know like why I was doing the things I was doing. It kind of became like a, a hamster wheel where I was just like trying to do all these things but nothing was really fulfilling me. I applied for that job, didn't get it. I thought I was meant to have it and then it kind of like when I didn't get it, it kind of like solidified what I was thinking that I wasn't good enough, that I was, you know, that I didn't know what I should be doing in my life. Um, all of these things but what ended up happening was that was a blessing. That was such a huge blessing that I didn't get that job because if I had gotten that job, my life would have been completely different and the, tra the trajectory of this year would have been totally different. So I'm very, very thankful and blessed and grateful that God closed that door for me. Um, this was also the time where we tried to apply for a loan to get a house and that was the first time we got well, we didn't get approved. Come April, I'm still kind of very anxious. I had, I didn't really talk about this, but I had, I think I had three or four major panic attacks. Panic attack, anxiety attacks in the middle of quarantine. I just felt scared, anxious. Um, you know, it was really rough. I, 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 it was a really dark time for me. And again, I didn't really talk about it because my first instinct is not to pick up a camera. Um, I did take a couple pictures because I'm like, I should document this, but it just feels so weird taking pictures when you're like crying and having a panic attack and not being able to breathe. So yeah, that happened <laughs> in March and April. April, I started posting workouts daily. You know, I felt weird posting workouts because like, you know, we're in the middle of lockdown, but then I also realized that moving helped me. So it probably was helping other people as well. So I really went crazy and I posted a workout every single day. And then I started my Instagram account um, getting traction. And I was like, what's happening? This is not, this isn't happening to me. What's going on? Um, so I kept doing that. I got the opportunity to work with Michelob Ultra and I hosted a workout to help a studio. Um, so we raised money for them. That was really great. Also, my taxes situation went down this month. I found out that my old tax person kind of screwed me over and the new guy kind of helped me and then I owed like $10,000 in taxes, which is why we tried to get pre-approved for a house again. And also, once again, we got denied. That happened again in, I think, May. So we got denied three times. Another thing I wanted to mention is that we spent Easter at home. Easter at home, Taz's birthday at home, and it was kind of like, Meh, right but what we also learned is that the church is not a location it's wherever you know we ask him to be with us and you know that was i think something that a lot of churches realize this year is that we put so much focus on the production of the church we put so much focus on the location of the church but it's so much more than that it's um a relationship with god and i i will say that my relationship got deeper this year with God and that's something that I'm very, very, very grateful for because he's helped me get through a lot of things. Thankfully, it was only three panic attacks. It could have been way more, but um, with his grace and his peace and um, just being in his presence, it really, really helped. Apply for house, got denied again. Come May, LOL, I decided to get a part-time job to supplement the income because we were trying to fix our debt to income ratio. So we had a lot of debt versus our income. Um, and we can make a whole video on this if you guys are interested, but I decided to get a part-time job. I was helping out this company with their social. Didn't last very long, <laughs> spoiler alert, um, which I'll talk about in a second. That is also when George Floyd unfortunately passed and it started unfolding a ton of events. That was also a really dark period, not only for myself, obviously, but for the world. We started seeing the Black Lives Matter movement and we I, I kind of stopped posting on Instagram for a little bit just to give um, our black community time to 
to speak. They, I feel like that was their time. I'm getting chills thinking about it and talking about it because that was a very, oh, I don't even know the word for it. It was, I remember I would watch some Netflix documentaries and I couldn't eat. I was so nauseous from what I was seeing and hearing and it was just, um, again, I'm getting chills. I, I, I oh, wow. Um, it's crazy. This is also a really good time. Like this is a, a reminder to you to pause before you go any further with this year and reflect on last year, not only what's going on in your life, but just in the world in general, because, you know, I think what one of the things this year has taught us is to really slow down and really take in what's going on and process it. I think, you know, before this year, we all went through the motions so quick and, you know, things would happen to us, unfortunate things, great things, and we wouldn't stop to reflect on what it was that was happening and process it. You know, there are times when, you know, we're going, we're going on, on fast forward and we're doing all these things and then our body just kind of gives out because we don't process things physically, emotionally, spiritually. So if there's anything you get from this video is to kind of just reflect on what happened last year and um, really sit with those feelings, you know, that you're having. And I know it sounds so woo, woo but it's so true. Like I didn't, like I wrote all of this stuff down and I was, I just wrote it down, but like now that I'm talking about it and like really reflecting on it, it's a whole different ball game, right? So um, yeah, that was May. I also, around this time, got much, much closer with uh, Jojo and her husband, Lim. Um, honestly, also, I, I guess I can get personal where this is a reflection of 2020. So uh, I will never forget when lockdown first started, Taz went immediately went from physical meeting at his job to you know Zoom calls with his, with his team every single day, right? So he still had connection with people. I had nothing. And yeah, I'm an influencer, but Typically, it's me talking to a camera, not an actual person, and you guys get that on the other side, so you're able to react to what I'm saying via a DM or whatever. So I had no communication with anybody, and I didn't realize that I needed that. Like, I I just needed it, and I was going to Taz for everything. So I was going to Taz for, you know, for laughter, for um, deep conversations, for gain, like everything, and you know, that's also something that we discuss in premarital counseling that we were able to like unpack. But all that to say is that one day I kind of just broke and I had a panic attack and I um, remember I couldn't breathe, I, whatever. And it all stemmed from obviously quarantine, feeling alone, feeling super overwhelmed with what was going on. You know, it was, it was bad, you guys know. And you know, Taz calmed me down, we talked through it and it was fine. The next day, I get a text from Joe, and at this point, you know, we had batch nights, we hung out, but it wasn't, it was more of like a, a group friendship. And she reached out to me and just said, hey, I just wanted to check in on you, that was it. And I honestly, I, I text Taz, and I was like, did you talk to Lem and tell him what happened? And he said, no, why? And I told him like, Joe reached out to me to check in on me, and this was literally the next day, so I know this is a God thing. Um, and I can honestly say that that was when our friendship kind of just like ignited because she checked she checked in on me and I literally threw up on her, like verbally threw up. I was like, I actually, I started off as like, I'm good, how are you? And then I was like, I can't lie. Like I just kind of verbally threw up and you know, I have anxiety, um, you know, getting sick and dying and everything. And I kind of told her that I feel I had COVID and she like talked through it with me. And it was really, it was, it was really, really sweet. And then ever since then, we just got really, really close. And I say that to say, because you guys know that I've had my fair share of um, like breakups with friendships. And you know, it's so sad uh, when you're going through them, but when, somebody else walks into your life, the same way as it works with like men and relationships, it's you kind of realize why it didn't work out with anybody else. Like those people might have not been your people. And, and I can genuinely say that I haven't had a friendship like this in a really long time and it feels so nice. Okay, but anyway, let's just keep going because I'm getting emotional. June, it was still, you know, we were going through the Black Lives Matter movement. I was educating myself, reading, watching documentaries, like I said. Um, June, we also got baptized and we legally got married. At this point, we were just gonna sign papers because we were still getting married in uh, Mexico. Um, but it ended up being a really, really sweet, small ceremony where 
our bridal party and our pastors that did our premarital counseling, they kind of just blessed us and they kind of spoke about, they spoke on us and what they loved about us. And um, we didn't say our vows, we didn't exchange rings and it was just signing of the papers because we wanted to keep the marriage or the wedding uh, rather um, still special. So we did get baptized and legally married on the same day, such a great day. Um, I announced Lavavi Swim and I was expecting to launch six weeks from that. LOL, that was in June and you guys know I launched in December. Um, June was also when I broke out in hives. I It's really interesting because I had never been allergic to anything in my life and I started breaking out in hives. I'll insert a picture here because it was ridiculous and I literally thought I was dying and I thought I had COVID and I didn't even go anywhere and I was just, I was really freaking out because I'm like, I haven't gone anywhere. How am I allergic to things? Like am I allergic to my dogs now? Which I ended up being allergic to dogs, but that's a whole different thing. I also heard from Tone It Up for the first time and my life had forever changed. Tone It Up wanted to work with me and I started doing some, not that month, but I started working with them and it was amazing. I also started a connect group in June virtually, obviously, because like I've mentioned it, I needed connection and I needed community and I needed to talk to people and that really, 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 really helped. Then also in June was my birthday. Taz apparently had something planned out, but that's also when restrictions started getting a little bit, well, it was like restrictions were lifting, but then they went back down and so he canceled everything and we ended up staying home, which was great. Um, I was a little bit sad because I love to celebrate my birthday, but um, I felt so loved. I had um, some friends drop off packages at my front door um, and it was really sweet. So, I mean, it wasn't the worst birthday, you know? In July, we finally decided to cancel our wedding to Mexico or in Mexico. And we decided, you know what? Restrictions are getting a little bit, they're easing on the restrictions. Let's just have the same date, but do it in Houston. I went to find the space, I fell in love with it like right away and we put the deposit down. The next day, restrictions got tighter. So that was this thought, like, do we keep it? Do we not? At this point, we also thought we were gonna get approved for a house. So we're like, how are we gonna pay for a house and a wedding? And so we decided to cancel the wedding because we thought we were gonna get a house. Cancel the wedding and postpone it until June, 2021. And then also we didn't get approved one last time and we had to come to terms with it and just kind of figure out what it was that was gonna help us get approved. And again, I'll make a video about this if you guys want to, but um, it's a long process and I can talk about it in that video. But we finally came to terms with the fact that we were not gonna get married and we were not gonna get a house. And again, like looking back, it's like, okay, great, you can get one next year. But like when you're in the middle of a troubled situation, whatever it is, you feel like your life is over, right? And it's so interesting now looking back, like we're good. Like we're gonna have our wedding in June. It's gonna be great. We're gonna get a house when we're meant to have a house and it's gonna be great. But um, it's when we're in those like troubling times that we have to remember like the night can only last for so long, right? The light's gonna come out. There's gonna be good days ahead and we just have to keep fighting the good fight. Um, Okay, so cancel our Houston wedding, postpone until next year. I also started filming YouTube workouts. I I wanted to do this, I wanted to provide the same content that I was on Instagram because I felt like, oh, people are loving these workouts, maybe they'll like it on YouTube. And it didn't really work out that way for me. It's interesting because I kept posting workouts and you know, I would get like my regular views, but it didn't do the same that it did for Instagram. So then I kind of took a step back. I finalized all the samples in July. I think it might've been even June, July, June. And I'm saying that because you guys know I didn't launch until December, just to give you some context. Um, in August, I hit 100K on Instagram, which was wild. Um, it's interesting because as much as this year was so bad, it also brought so much good. Like. Without going into too much information, my career skyrocketed this past year. Um, Taz and I are gonna be financially stable this new year. Um, we are gonna be able to buy a house, a house that we never even dreamed of. Um, we're able to pay for our wedding. And it's just crazy how, how, how it happened. And 
I hit 100K on Instagram and then I just kept growing. Um, I kept dealing with those allergies. I was thinking that I was dying still. <laughs> I went to see an allergist, got allergy tested, and like I said, they said that I was allergic to dogs, to mold, to all types of grass, all types of trees, pollen, like so many things. And I was like, great. This is perfect. Great. So uh, now I take medicine for my allergies. If I don't take them, I literally cannot stop itching. Um, and then in August, I also quit that job that I started in May. Unfortunately, the plan was to help this company out for the long haul, really. But I got so busy that I could not give them the attention that they wanted or deserved, to be honest. Hold on, my dog. And so I had to part ways with them. Um, it wasn't anything bad. I just literally could not keep up with my stuff and their stuff and do it with excellence. So I quit that job. And then September came and Taz and I decided to fly for the first time since January, for me anyway. We flew to Mexico to celebrate our would-be wedding. And honestly, that was the best time I ever had in Mexico. You know, the travel restrictions kind of got lifted a little bit. Um, everybody, there was literally nobody at the hotel. They, The resorts went above and beyond cleaning, making us feel safe. And honestly, I'm really glad that we went because Taz and I have never been on vacation just by ourselves. And you know, that was just a, such a great trip and I loved it. And honestly, I can't wait for our honeymoon um, or more trips just with him because our entire relationship has been with his family, my family, both of our families and rarely do we go on vacation by ourselves. So I also won a grant in September for Lavavi. Um, that was a very unexpected surprise. So blessed by that. And I decided to take that and put it towards a um, website designer and who made my website and I'm obsessed. In September, La Valley Pizzas finally went to production. Obviously, you know, with the pandemic, manufacturers slow or productions were slowed down which was out of our control but we finally went to production in september in september my brother had a baby emma and made me an aunt um my first time <laughs> my brother made me an aunt <laughs> water break and then in october joe had her baby lennon and made me a godmother and oh my gosh my heart is just so happy I got severe baby fever. <laughs> and then I also hired a freelance designer in October to help me plan the next launches. Like I said, I just started getting so busy and I just not could not handle it all. And while I make moves to hire someone, by the way, I am in the process of hiring somebody. So if you're interested, send me an email. I'm looking for an assistant. <laughs> I'll link the job description below. I, I don't know, I just need help. <laughs> Okay, hired a freelance designer in November. I won another grant for Lavavi. Um, also ridiculous. I remember applying. I'm like, I'm probably not going to get it, but hey, here we are. And I got an email and they're like, congratulations. And I was like, congratulations for what? And then I got the grant and I was like, what? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And then that's when Thanksgiving was spent here at the house, just Taz and I. Um, Hopefully our last one in this house, so it was very bittersweet. In November, we also gave up our car. So we had two cars. Our lease was up for the Corolla, and so we decided to turn that in and not get a new car to start saving money and to lower our debt to income ratio. So now we only have one car, and hopefully this is all good things for when we go to apply for a house, which... <laughs> we... Uh... We'll have less, less, less debt, wow. And then last but not least, I paid off over $10,000 in debt in November. Crazy, 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 crazy. So December comes around and Vlogmas takes over my life. Vlogmas was literally all of December. I finally launched Lavabi's second launch of the year. I didn't, I wanted there to be more launches, but pandemics and stuff happened. Had the best launch I've ever had in my life. I also did my first business consult, which was really, really fun. Um, so yeah, this year was crazy. Ups, downs, all arounds. And I am just so thankful that I'm able to live another year and be able to grow and learn. And honestly, I've learned so much. I've kind of mentioned it throughout, but um, what I'm taking into the next year is just knowing that everything can change in a second. 
like good or bad and being okay with that and remembering God's plan for our lives and knowing that he's in control and he's got it all figured out and there is no need for us to worry. Yes, I worry all the time, but I'm trying really hard to remember and keep God's peace within me so that I can live my life with more joy, more happiness, more peace. That's literally what I want. My word for next year is um, intention and pray because I wanna live my life with more intention. I don't wanna keep going through the motions and I also wanna pray more because I want prayer to be my first resort, not my last resort. There's just so much that I can say about this year and I hope that um, as we all go into 2021 together, I hope that you have found a new love and um, new respect for rest and prayer and meditation and movement and just things to take care of you because when all the world is falling apart, you need to be at peace with who you are, your life and um, where you're headed. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I really, really hope it does. And this video is so long, I apologize, but um, let me know if you want me to kind of touch base on anything. I'd love to, if it's the house or the whole process, um, Taz and I would love to sit and talk to you guys about that. It's been a really long journey and I know that this is only the beginning for us and I cannot wait to see what 2021 has in store, not only for us, but for you and the world that we're living in. Hopefully there's more peace coming, um, more community and just, I don't know, I just keep coming, the word peace comes to me and I just pray that it's more peaceful and um, just a better world, as corny as it sounds. That's all I pray for. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video this this little timeline video um let me know if you enjoyed it maybe we'll do more and then for next year obviously and then also let me know what you want to see from me moving forward um you guys are the reason i make these videos and i want to know what you guys want so let me know below i love you all so much thank you so much for watching please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe and here we go 2021 it's game time love y'all